Senator Joe Manchin, a conservative Democrat in the Senate, is bought off by the fossil fuel industry. There's no question about it. You just see the dollar signs and it tells you all you need to know. Now, despite his massive conflicts of interest, he is now claiming that no, he's not bought off. He's playing defense because Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez called him out for being beholden to the fossil fuel industry. Now, I love this video because here's Joe Manchin playing defense. I'm sure you've heard your fellow Democrat, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said this about you in a tweet. Manchin has weekly huddles with Exxon and is one of many senators who gives lobbyists their pen to write so-called bipartisan fossil fuels bills. It's killing people, sick of this bipartisan corruption that masquerades as clear-eyed moderation. That's this is your fellow Democrat. Well, well, is it true that you have weekly meetings with Exxon not. and other absolutely lobbyists not. You for ask fossil fuels? No, they don't. Weekly meetings, I don't. It's just false. I, I keep my door open for everybody. It's totally false. And those type of superlatives, it's just awful. Continue to divide, divide, divide. I don't know the young lady that well. I really don't. I've met her one time, I think, between sets here, but that's it. So we have not had any conversations. She's just speculating and saying things because she wants to. She's not the only one. I'm sure you've heard. There are a number of your fellow Democrats who say that you're opposed to this because you're I'm bought and paid for by I'm opposed corporate to it donors. It makes no sense at all. That was fantastic, and it shows you the type of leverage and power that progressive lawmakers can have if they're willing to call out their own when they're more willing to basically protect corporate interests as opposed to the best interests of their own constituents. Okay, so uh, this is great news. We're now having a national conversation about whether uh, Joe Manchin is bought off by his corporate donors. Mm. And so, uh, Look, I think Dana uh, Dana Bash did a really good job in that interview. She was tough and asked uh, the, the questions you needed to ask. The next interview, we might even get a follow up on whose donors are, uh, because once you find out who the donors are, it gets worse and worse. I do know someone who asked that question. We'll get to him later. Fine, it's me. Oh, you're unbearable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, no, but seriously, this is really important. And I only give that as an example of what should happen on a regular basis. But no corporate Democrat was ever asked about their donors until just Democrats came in and now finally have brought this issue forward. And not just just Democrats, wonderful progressives like Katie Porter. And now it forces, just what did I tell you guys? It forces the media to then ask them about it. Now we're having the right conversation. Why is Joe Manchin doing what he's doing? And so I got so much more on that. But but thank you to AOC and the others for us get finally getting to the heart of the matter. What actually motivates them to vote the way that they do? Yeah, and before I get to the second part of Manchin's interview with CNN, I, I do want to give you the tweet that sparked this conversation in the first place. AOC had tweeted the following, Manchin has weekly huddles with Exxon and is one of many senators who gives lobbyists their pen to write so-called bipartisan fossil fuel bills. It's killing people, our people, at least 12 last night, sick of this bipartisan corruption that masquerades as clear-eyed moderation. And of course, she's responding to Manchin's op-ed where he makes clear that he is against the $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation bill, which includes incredibly important provisions, including climate action, paid family leave, and expansion of Medicare to include dental and you know vision. And so I love the fact that she hit pretty hard in that tweet. It apparently had an effect, and here's the second part of the interview. Do your own facts. I mean, your own uh, your own opinions. You're just not entitled to create your own facts to support it, and that's exactly what they're doing. The facts I've given you is the transitions happening, reliability. Look what happened in Texas. It was natural gas that basically shut down in Texas that caused all that horrible carnage to people. It was awful. You have said pause. What the Senate wants to do is get this worked out by this week so that the House can vote on it September 27th. Is that a timeline that you can support in any There's way? There's no way we can get this done by, by the 27th if we do our job. There's so much differences that we have here and so much, there's so much apart from us where we are as far as our, I'm giving you different things. I've been talking, I'm working, working with people, I'm willing to talk to people, it makes no sense at all. 
there's so much to unpack in that clip. Um, and I, I want to debunk much of what he had to say, which means, you know what? It's time to take a trip to the debunker. You didn't see Republicans when we had control of the Senate try to rig the game. It shows how the Green New Deal would be a deadly deal for the United States of America. Our systems are not racist. So, Jake, two quick things I want to mention before I toss to you. Number one, this is a side note, but Manchin, in a very weaselly way, just said that people died in Texas during that winter storm because of the natural gas failing the people of Texas. No, it's a deregulated, privatized, energy grid that failed the people of Texas. Since it was deregulated, it was not weatherized to withstand the temperatures that Texans were experiencing during that winter storm. That's a side note. Getting back to the $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill, he claims he has a problem with the spending. Then why did he vote in favor of the framework for that bill, which clearly stated that it would spend $3.5 trillion? Now he's backing away from it. And gee, I wonder why, could it be that he has these weekly meetings with his donors, including ExxonMobil, which we'll get to in just a second, Cenk. Yeah, um, so I like the line that Davis Sroda had the other day. Uh, we're now negotiating this with a coal baron who lives on a luxury yacht. Uh, and, and that's who Joe Manchin is. So when we are debunking him, understand that he has, as we've mentioned many times, not just uh, corporate contributions to his campaigns, but personal money invested in the coal industry. So that's why he keeps saying it doesn't make any sense. And in his way to be fair to him, it doesn't for him, he'd lose money. Now we would save the planet, but for him, that doesn't make sense. He doesn't wanna lose any money. So uh, I wanna contribute to this in, in going back to the first video, he said, I keep my door open. And he said, you know, every week, I don't know, look, um, I don't know about every week. <laughs> in other words, yes, you do meet with them all the time with great regularity. In fact, um, a jar of jam Gino uh, member here wrote in not weekly meetings. Oh, okay, so what is it, bi weekly then? But it was very clear from his answer. He said, in the middle of it, I keep my door open. That means, yes, I definitely have meetings with lobbyists. And so he said, the superlatives are awful uh, when you point out the fact. And later he said facts are not negotiable. But at that time, he's like, you wanna point out a fact about my regular meetings with lobbyists. Well, that is just a superlative and that is divide, divide, divide. She don't like that. Yeah, Co corruption not awful, pointing out corruption awful. That is a normal talking point in Washington DC. And if you notice, and AOC later took um, umbrage with this, he called her a young lady instead of a congresswoman. Now you can say, hey, that's nitpicking. But she made an interesting point, AOC did, when she said, now if I used age and gender, would that seem okay? So if I said, oh, I haven't met the old man, <laughs> okay, but I hear he says this. And I was like, oh, damn, that's a really good point. Like no one would find that acceptable. And she further added, he's using that kind of language. Not because AOC needs a title and she needs some respect in that sense, but he's using it in a way to put her down. Like this young lady who doesn't know how Washington works. Within the context of his answer, it's clear that that's his implication. To diminish the power she has, really. Yes. That's what it's really yes. about. Yeah. Um, so I also want to remind you all of something we learned about earlier this year when an, a senior ExxonMobil lobbyist mentioned Joe Manchin by name as he was interviewed for what he believed was another position at a different company. Now he didn't know he was being recorded, but here's what he had to say. Who's the crucial guys for you? Well, Senator Capito, who is the, who chairs the Senate, who's the ranking member on Environment and Public Works, Joe Manchin, I talk to his office every week. Um, he is the kingmaker uh, on this because he's a Democrat from West Virginia, which is very conservative state. Um, so he is, uh, and, and he's not shy about sort of staking his claim early yeah. and completely changing the debate. So, so, so on the Democrat side, we look for the moderates mm -hmm. on these issues. So it's the mansions, it's the cinemas, it's the testers. Oh, that senior Exxon Mobil lobbyist just said that he speaks to Joe Manchin every week. Joe Manchin, the kingmaker. 
speaks to him every week. Seems like Representative Ocasio-Cortez was absolutely correct in stating very specifically how often Joe Manchin meets with fossil fuel lobbyists. And there's another thing that Keith McCoy said there that's really relevant. Joe Manchin isn't normally shy about it, but here we've come to an interesting intersection because he will go and take checks from the Chamber of Commerce right before a statement or right after a statement where he basically supports their legislative priorities and he kills corporate tax cuts. Then goes to the Chamber of Commerce and just says, give me the money, give me the money. Now though, he's being called out for his corporate donors in the press for the first time in national media. And so before he was brazen about it, because there's no downside. You can go collect those checks, you can show it to people, hey, I just got bribed. And he, the restaurant association is a perfect example. Right after he kills minimum wage, he goes and collects checks from them. I mean, normally if you had a functioning press in America, they'd be like, oh my God, look at the outrage. That looks like outright bribery, right? And Manchin used to walk around with checks like taped to his head in Washington, and no one ever pointed it out. And so now, being pointed out by a fellow Democrat, then on CNN, my guess is he'll be a little less brazen now. So, so, so we'll see if he takes a couple of patches off of his NASCAR <laughs> suit, right? Doubt it. But there's no question that Exxon Mobil lobby is saying, "Oh yeah, that's my boy." Okay, that's the guy we go to to get Exxon Mobil a good hearing. Uh, under the dome, as they say. Now, one other thing, throughout that interview, uh, he kept saying about how there's no urgency for this three and a half trillion dollar bill. He said, on the other hand, there is urgency, and he kept using the same word over and over again about the uh, the one billion dollar so-called bipartisan bill. Yeah, the corporate trillion. handout bill. Yeah, 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 the corporate backed one, right? So why is he saying that? Because he can say, oh yeah, the three and a half trillion, I'm like, we're gonna negotiate, I'll do something along those lines. But later, let's vote on the one that's corporate backed first. Well, that's the oldest trick in the book. So he apparently thinks it's still the old days where he can do that trick. And we're about to find out because the old days were like a minute ago. So if the progressives say no, you're either passing them both at the same time or you're not passing your corporate backed one, then he'll find out it's the new days and he actually has to negotiate. Well, the good news is on that same episode, the other senator who was interviewed was Bernie Sanders. And during that interview, he made abundantly clear that progressives will not pass the bipartisan corporate handout bill unless they pass the $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation bill. They're not kidding. They're now on the record multiple times making it very clear that they are willing to sink the bipartisan bill unless they get exactly what they want with the reconciliation bill. Now look, they're gonna negotiate are a few things likely to be either cut down or cut back a little in that bill. It's likely, right? The, the real question is to what extent? But nonetheless, I do find it interesting that back in 2017, Senator Joe Manchin was asked point blank whether he is influenced by his corporate donors. He didn't really seem too scared of that line of questioning. Maybe he minimized independent media in that case. But I do wanna remind you all of how that interview went down. Well, you voted to repeal the stream protection rule. Um, and your top donor is First Energy uh, that wound up getting in some degree of trouble for uh, putting arsenic in a pond. It seems like they would benefit from the repeal of that regulation. So did that have anything to do with your vote? No, Jenks, I know it's hard to believe and I know it's hard for people to, I don't have any idea who gives me money. I don't solicit from the standpoint that you do this for me, quit pro quo. That's never been me, that's not my political mantra at all. This is the list of your top donors. I, I, I thought you said that you don't, I, I understand that you said you don't do quid pro quo, that, that was clear. Yeah. But you know who your top donors are, right? I do not. You don't know who your top donors are? I do not, you're showing me something I've never seen. Okay, so this is from Open you Secrets. Have, I know you have, Jenks, I know that it's hard for anyone to, to believe, I do not. I do not, Jenks. I do not. Yeah. yeah, he's totally in the dark about who his donors are. I'm sure he has no idea as he's fundraising for his reelection campaigns. I'm sure he has no idea at all.
Guys, if you don't watch that at all, that is actually the most outrageous fabrication anyone could I ever say. I know it's say. hard to believe, Jake. I yeah. know it's hard to believe. Yeah, there's a good reason why it's hard to believe. No one should believe it. <laughs> yes, um, they know who their top donors are with great specificity. Uh, that is the one thing they are all obsessed with. The idea that you, that a sitting senator wouldn't know who his top donors are is patently absurd, and so. I'm hoping that's the next level we get to in mainstream media where they can say, hey, look, here's a graphic of your top donors. It looks like there are a lot of energy companies and drug companies, mm -hmm. and it looks like your votes match their interests nearly perfectly. That's the interview we had here on the Young Turks. It was a little uncomfortable at times, but that's called journalism. And I just want to direct you guys to one more piece of data regarding campaign donations that go to people like Joe Manchin, specifically from fossil fuel companies. Analysis of campaign disclosures found the six Democratic senators, Senator Mark Kelly, Maggie Hassan, Joe Manchin, Chris Coons, Kirsten Sinema, and John Tester received a combined total of nearly $333,000 from lobbyists, political action committees, and lobbying firms affiliated with Exxon over the past decade. So it's not just about Manchin. Manchin just tends to be the most vociferous in speaking out against the $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill. But understand that corporate Democrats in the Senate are and will continue to be a problem unless they're taken to task over their conflicts of interest, not just through corporate lobbying and the money that they receive from legalized bribery, but also from their personal investments in fossil fuel companies. Joe Manchin makes half a million dollars a year alone from being invested in a fossil fuel company, in a coal company, and that's a problem. Obviously, that's a conflict of interest and he should be completely divested from it. But half a million dollars is more than double what he receives in his Senate salary. So I doubt that's gonna happen unless laws are passed to make it so. Yeah, we'll provide a link down below in the description box for that interview that I did with Joe Manchin about four years ago. It was really interesting, check it out if you can. Always check out the description box, good links in there quite often. There are a lot of great ways to watch the Young Turks, but is there a best way? Of course, the best way is to watch live. Tune in weekdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. You get our uncensored, unapologetic version of the news that you won't get anywhere else. Watch us live.